So far, we have learned that if we want to describe a particle in quantum world, we need to know its wave function psi. If we perform a measurement on the particle, for example, if we measure its position, the wave function collapses to a spike showing its measured position. The wave function gives us all information we need to talk about the particle. If we plot psi squared against the position, the area under the graph should yield 1 because the particle should be somewhere in the space. Suppose that we have an ensemble of particles, each one in the same state psi. If we perform a simultaneous measurement, we can see that each measurement gives a position. The position values might be different because of the probabilistic nature of the wave function, and each individual measurement forces the wave function to collapse to a spike which is now localized. We can do the same thing by measuring the position on the first particle, but it changes the wave function. And our second measurement will be on the particle with a different wave function psi prime. However, if we return the particle to its original state psi, and then perform a measurement, it yields x2, which is still a measurement performed on psi. By repeating this process, we can again have position values obtained from state psi. The average of these measurements on the position of the particle is given by this equation. If we have enough measurements, the average gives the expectation value for the position, meaning that we expect the particle to be at this position. What if we want to find the expectation value without actually measuring anything? The expectation value of x is given by this formula. It is the average of repeated measurements on an ensemble of identically prepared systems. Psi is dependent on time and we might want to know how the expectation value of x will change as time goes on. Let's take the derivative of the expectation value with respect to time. Like the previous video in this series, we can use the Schrodinger equation to find this formula. We can simplify this integral using integration by parts. Suppose that f is x and g is this expression. Now by using integration by parts, we can easily simplify this integral. And now we have two parts. The second part should be zero, because psi cannot go to infinity and should be zero based on the previous video. Another integration by parts on the second part of this integral gives an even simpler equation. Note that the second term here should go to zero too. And finally, for the time evolution of the expectation value of x, we can write this expression. Pay attention that this is not the velocity of the particle. But we can say that the expectation value of the velocity is equal to the time derivative of the expectation value of position. In quantum mechanics, it is more usual to work with momentum than velocity. The expectation value of the momentum is given by this expression. The expectation values of x and p can be written like this. In this notation, we have operators that represent position and momentum. 